Hi, welcome to another episode of Scorpio Season here today with your hosts, Lisa and Venkat. Uh, Venkat, how are you feeling today? Ooh, feeling really sleepy. So we are doing Z for Z. So we are going to be talking about sleep. So rather appropriate that um, I'm sleeping or sleepy. I just woke up from a nap. And uh, yeah, this is our season finale. And then we are uh, into the summer. Into the summer, right. yeah. Yeah. So how about you? Are you sleepy, alert? What's on a scale of zero to 10, how alert are you? I would say I'm a pretty, I'm like a negative one alert. I'm definitely half <laughs> asleep thinking about, you know, a nap would be great. A nap sounds great right now. Yeah, uh, I think the reason I'm particularly sleepy today is uh, late last night, we discovered uh, a bit of credit card fraud. So we stayed up till like, uh, I stayed up till like one um, sort of helping sort it out, but my wife couldn't sleep and she went on to do like a couple more hours of digging into like credit card statements and stuff just to be sure. But uh, yeah, so sleep, yeah. Are you in general a good sleeper? Pretty good, yeah. I'm the kind of person who, if I fall asleep, it's hard to wake me up for anything other than, um, I don't know, like, yeah. I, uh, I used to be a really bad sleeper in grad school. Like I had severe insomnia, I think until around 2000. And then, I don't know, something snapped in my head and I was like, all right, I'm a good sleeper now. But it, it took a while and uh, yeah, I think now it's like, I think I used to have a lot more of uh, what used to keep me up when I was younger was uh, mind wandering, like they call it. Like you can't sleep because you have racing thoughts and you're like thinking of a million things. That doesn't happen to me much anymore. Like it's not that I hit the pillow and I'm asleep in 10 seconds. I'll never be that good of a sleeper. Mm. Like many people are, like I have friends I've gone on road trips with and they'll be like, you take over and drive and they go to the passenger seat and I turn around to say like one word and they're already asleep. <laughs> that happened to me once. Um, how long does it take you to fall asleep? I have no idea, not that long. Um, when I decide to like actually, so I think, I mean, my problem with sleep kind of like we're talking about like sleep hygiene now um my problem with falling asleep is that I usually um have my phone in bed and so I'll be on my phone until late but if I like decided to put it down and put it away usually I can fall asleep really quickly um unless do I'm worried about you, do you have like a uh, night mode and all that other stuff oh yeah it like goes into like sleepy time can't see any notifications but that doesn't stop me from opening up twitter um Oh, yeah, I do that too. Like uh, in bed, I usually either read for like half an hour on a Kindle. So that's not as much of a strain like a, a e-ink Kindle or uh, yeah, I spend some time uh, on Twitter or something. That was a good yawn. Yes. <laughs> I think that like, you know, people say that being in places with like high carbon monoxide, you start yawning. I think like locking myself in a small room contributes to um, increasing the level of carbon monoxide. Is it monoxide, dioxide, whatever, whichever the one is you exhale. It should be carbon dioxide, not dioxide, monoxide. Dioxide. Monoxide is the stuff that comes out of car exhaust. So yeah, you'd be one. dead. Yeah. Have you ever used um, like a sleep monitor or something? I feel like at one point I was using something that told me how long I slept for and like the iPhone kind of does that now but I don't pay any attention to it. I pay zero attention. I mean, I know when I've gotten a good night's of sleep. Like wake up the next day, you feel like your limbs feel heavy. Um, it's kind of interesting. Uh, I've uh, done quite a bit of this stuff. Like um, uh, one of the first devices on the market was called a Zio. Do you remember that? It looked like a bedside clock and it had a little headband uh, sensor thing. Mm -hmm. And that used to like, um, almost alarmed me like because it um, would report things like I was getting only 15 to 20 minutes deep sleep huh. so that had me worried and I eventually stopped using it. it was too cumbersome but now I use this thing I don't know if you can see it but yeah this is a whoop so it costs like a 30 bucks a month subscription so it's not cheap but it's I think the best designed of its type and this is the sort of uh, what the app looks like I don't know how, how oh, so you see. get like little bar graphs of how much. Yeah, I get, uh, I think I'm- What is the percents on that, Van Cat? So I've been having good, so these are percents of um, how much sleep you needed versus how much you got. So not quality of sleep. I so, uh, I don't know, let me hold up. Let me... Yeah, you're gonna have to shut that window so we're not getting any glare. 
Yeah, I can sort of talk about this for a couple of minutes. Can you see that? Uh, yeah, kind of. Okay, so the bar graph is how many hours I got versus how many I needed. And you can see the number for last night is uh, 7, 16. So seven hours, 16 minutes is what I got versus seven hours, 19 minutes. So I actually got uh, really good performance according to the whoop. And this performance number 96% is really good. That's the recovery. And whoop uses um, heart rate variability as its main metric of how well you've recovered. Mm -hmm. So in the 90s is really good and gives you green. So I think green is like 80 to 100% and below that is yellow, then red, that kind of stuff. So even though I'm feeling very tired because it was like a off sleep pattern, I, uh, uh, according to the metrics, I got enough sleep. Actually, let me look at, uh, uh, what, oh wait, no, this was like for average for last week where I told you what I got yesterday was I needed 608 and I actually got 723 because I got a nap. But uh, let me look at um, what, breakdown was uh, all stages eight hours i got one hour and 54 minutes of deep sleep but uh, yeah uh, this stuff is kind of fun because i think uh, sometimes it challenges your intuitions about whether or not you got a good night's sleep other times the numbers are bad but you feel feel like you got a really good night's sleep so does that i mean it's like if you feel like you did well but the numbers say you didn't which one's right I think what you feel is not precise. It includes a lot more, right? Like you might be getting up and you're like tired by the very thought of the meeting you have to attend or something like that. So it's like um, larger psychological effects um, and other, yeah, like brain fog from other reasons. Like maybe you had too little or too much coffee. Uh, the weather is bad, carbon dioxide in the air. So there's like I think our subjective self-awareness of why our attention is the way it is. Sleep is the biggest factor, but we, I think, cannot sort it out. Like, I don't think humans are good at like sorting out what contributing factors affect things. And of course, the technology is also kind of shady. Like uh, there's sort of been a cult of HRV in the last uh, few years. So heart rate variability, a lot of papers have been published about how that's like the golden metric that shows you how good your health is in all kinds of ways. So I'm getting a little skeptical of how good HRV is, but there's a lot of excitement about it. What does HRV mean exactly? Like heart rate but very variability? It's like, so if your normal heart rate is say, uh, ref, uh, like, you know, walking around heart rate is say 70 or 80, then variability is like plus or minus how much, it's like volatility in stock prices. That oh, kind of thing, right? <laughs> and um, so, wait, so it's saying that you want variability, or you want it to be kind of like you want variability because the sign of a healthy heart and circulatory system is that your heart rate is not exactly stable, but it varies a little bit because it's kind of prepared for stress or something like that. So if your heart rate goes a little too steady, it means um, your body's in poor recovery. So that's counterintuitive, I know, because. If you have like variable heart rate, it sounds like you're kind of like um, having a heart attack or something. Yeah. So that's also true. That's like tachycardia, like extreme variability. Uh, but a little bit of variability is actually good. It's like, you know, anti-fragile. I see, interesting. I was gonna say, cause like when you, when we did, so I, I, I mean, we're talking about heart rates now more than sleep, but when I was in high school, I used to run cross country and part of the, Part of your workouts is you would take your pulse so you'd like do a workout and you would have like kind of a target of how hard you were how much effort you're expending based on what your heart rate ended up at and so you would try and kind of target how fast you're running so you would get your heart rate up to like certain levels or whatever um yep. this uh, the whoop is actually designed for that it's not primarily a sloop, uh, sleep monitor it's, uh, okay. it's an athletic performance training let me show you that screen so it has um, uh, it uses two measures, strain and recovery. So it's mainly for cardio kind of workouts. So like running, uh, let's see if I can show you a good screen here. But each time you do a workout, it shows you uh, your strain score. So let me show you one example if I can. 4.1. It says 4.1 and below that the text tells me that based on my recovery levels, how much strain I should put in in my workout today. So right now it's saying based on your 92% recovery, 11.5 to 19.5 day strain will balance exertion and recovery. 
And this is the all day accumulating strain. So it counts that a certain way. The maximum is 21, so zero to 21. Okay. But if I go for a run, usually I go for like a three mile run, mm -hmm. that will give me like a 12.2 activity strain score. And that's okay. based on like the target uh, heart rate and stuff. So once I do a workout, it shows me like max heart rate, how long you spent in a different heart rate zone, stuff like that. Do you still run? I mean, I went on a run this morning, like a short one. Um, so I mean, yes, but not a lot. I used to do it a lot more regularly and longer distances than I have. Like how many times a week? You probably still run more than I do. Uh, I try to go a couple times a week. Oh, you're still way more than me. <laughs> like some good weeks I ended up, end up going like two or three times, but mm -hmm. many weeks I miss altogether. But uh, yeah, you, you might like the whoop. And if you do get it, you should use my affiliate code and I'll get a free month. <laughs> well, you should send us the affiliate code so we can put it in the... Um, yes, let's the do that. But, uh, so I get one month free for everybody I sign up. And so far I've signed up one other uh, guinea pig. <laughs> but it's actually good. It's, uh, but full disclosure, it's... So the, this is like a whole bunch of like fitness trap devices that are coming on the market. This one is on the high end. It's like 30 bucks a month subscription. Amazon has one called the Halo, which is like five bucks. The Apple Watch does um, stuff, but it doesn't have a subscription monitoring thing. Garmin has one. Uh, and this one, it's really well-designed in terms of like features and the UX. It's, the, the, what I like about it is it's reduced everything to two numbers, your strain score for the day and activities and your recovery score based on sleep. So it's like, you just have to pay attention to two numbers. Uh, so that part is good, but uh, reviews online and other people have complained that its um, heart rate uh, sensor is not the most accurate. So that's a slight problem, but I'm not training for the Olympics. So it's good enough for me. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, so do you feel like your le general le level of health has gone up since you started using the Whoop? Yes, but because of an indirect reason, like having a number score every day, whether or not I've exercised, kind of has a motivating effect, especially if I have like several days in a row and then it's like a crappy night's sleep where I get like 30% recovery score. And it's like, it sort of like really makes it visible when I've been um, sort of neglecting both sleep hygiene and uh, exercise. Uh, and as far as like the device itself and how much it trains you to either work out or sleep better, that has not had as much of an effect. Like it keeps beeping at me to go to bed at consistent times. I don't, uh, but apparently that's a huge thing. Like if you it's go the best very thing consistently, you can do for yourself, yeah. yeah. It's like consistent uh, bedtime, I think is like the biggest thing in sleep really. Yeah. And like uh, there's uh, some, uh, one of my clients, he's like a super rich guy. I won't mention who it is, but he's like super into this stuff. And he calls himself a professional uh, sleeper. And he's optimized things to death. And he um, like basically does intermittent fasting for like 20 hours. So he's, he's done eating like early in the morning, like 10 a.m., 11 a.m. He's fasting all the way till his exact bedtime. And he goes to bedtime like plus or minus a few minutes, like that precise. Yeah. And he, uh, in a sort of isolated sleep pod and stuff like that. So he's like mm -hmm. really done it. And he seems to have like superhuman levels of energy compared to normal people. So I think if you can actually afford to optimize sleep, it does actually do a lot. It makes a big difference. Yeah. Like it makes a it huge does. difference. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, I should mention while we're on tech and before we change topics. Um, so I have a mild sleep apnea. So that's when your breathing gets interrupted when you are sleeping. Mm -hmm. So I use a, what's known as a CPAP machine. Do you know what that is? I've heard of it, but I yeah, should explain it's it. It's basically a little pump and a hose that attaches to your mouth. And it has, it maintains continuous positive pressure. So you can easily sleep on your back. Uh, so I have trouble sleeping on my back otherwise. So I had a sleep study done about four years ago that monitored how well I slept. And it turned out that I was like waking up several times an hour like without even noticing it because of the apnea. Mm. And the CPAP made a huge difference. It's like hugely underdiagnosed. Like people say that uh, something like 30 to 40% of the population suffers from it, but like only a few percent are diagnosed. And that's probably the thing that has made the biggest difference more than any like attitude or behavior shifts for me. That makes sense, yeah. Yeah, so that's my, I think that's most of the things I have to say about sleep. Most of the things you have to say is about sleep, that's it. 
Um, what else, what do you have to say about sleep? What do I have to say about sleep? Well, I think like the first thing that I find interesting is that you track, like I'm so against personalized tracking. Um, I have a, I mean, I have a fancy running watch that I use sometimes, but I usually don't even like, I don't like it tracking where I've gone, like the GPS stuff. <laughs> so I like, I use it for time. Like, and I, I like knowing how long I've been running for. And I like that it'll tell me how fast I'm running. So while I'm running, I can look at it and be like, oh, I'm like running however fast. Like that's, that's good to know. Like that's good information. Um, but uh, yeah, other than that, I don't like, but after I'm done with the race, like the run, usually I don't really want to know and I don't want to remember and I don't want to have like any record of it. I just want to like, the record will be myself and like how stuff moves forward from there. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think, I think, I think sleep is really important. I think not enough people talk about it. Um, but I also think like, I have a kind of a weird thing about talking about how much sleep you got that's sort of based on my college experience. Um, I think it's like, I do not talk about how much sleep I got in polite company, unless it's like incredibly, unless it's like to the point where I like have to go take a nap, like need to like stop what I'm doing. And like at that point it needs to like be a thing that I'd be like, okay, I cannot function for like, for whatever reason, I will like talk to you later. I have to go sleep right now. Um, but like, and I, that seems like kind of weird, but like, I kind of like, if people want to talk to me about their sleep schedules for the most part, I'm kind of like, oh, honey, you should figure that out by now. You've been out of school or whatever for like <laughs> however many years now. Like, we don't, you don't like, you figure that shit out or you don't, you're an adult now. Um, Cause like, I feel like in college, like the way that it would come up a lot is people be like, oh, I like pulled an all nighter last night or I'm so tired and get like, so cool. Cause I did all this stuff or whatever. People will be like, oh yeah, I got like 10 hours of sleep last week. And you're like, you what? Um, and like, so like, I don't mean, this is just my experience of like going to school and like the honors quad and like, yeah, bunch... it's sort of one of those bragging kind of like, uh, subjects, like, uh, yeah. it's kind of like internal equivalent of weather, right? It's the same kind of boring conversation topic in general, but it's like, there was this amazing storm and lightning and thunder. It's like, yeah, but it's just weather and you're like, um, using it to like create a random bragging topic and sleep is kind of like that it's like I had too much sleep or no sleep yeah so personally I'm like I don't care you're here we're having a conversation <laughs> like do you need to go take a nap great thanks for letting me know we'll talk later like I don't know um uh, like but what about sleep the way we've been talking about it on this session as like an actual subject to, uh, with like interesting aspects to it yeah, I mean, I think it's important for people to know that getting sleep is important and that like, like, I mean, they did, like, I think like, there's like really good evidence that waking up early can cause, like, can like fix your depression. Like, so uh, a large part of the depression is like waking up kind of later in the morning or even like around noon. And if you like, they have like some, there's some ways of fixing it and that like you start going to sleep there's like some weird thing you can do where you basically like fix your sleep by like sleeping all the way around the day and then you start waking up like early like seven o'clock um so I think that's like really important for people to know that you can play with sleep and that um the way that like that kind of fixes your like there's sleep's kind of like what do you call it like the hyper object um it's like the thing that like shapes your experience that like you touch but like isn't really like it's so um maybe I'm mis I'm misdescribing hyper object but like it's it's a it's such a big aspect of the environment you live in that you like tend not to see it like exactly yep. consciously so like sleep is like the amount of sleep you get is like a hyper object of the human experience um and so like it is like it's definitely something that like if you're like trying to fix mood disorders or you're like having a lot of trouble with concentration or focus getting more sleep and like making your sleep regular uh, waking up early, like actually waking up early is like really good for kind of ways to like sort of try fixing that hyper object like fabric, so to speak, that's like affecting your ability to like mentally focus. I guess that's usually when people like bring it up in context of. Um, so I think those kinds of conversations are pretty interesting, but also like, I don't know, at the end of the day, I'm like, my sleep is like my personal business. Like, I really like going to bed. I like really like waking up at before 7 a.m. That makes me oh, happy. Oh, wow, you're an early riser. 
I don't get out of bed. No, I'm not an early riser. I'm an early waker. I think like <laughs> these are like very different things. So, and I don't, I don't set an alarm, I think is another kind of interesting thing. Oh yeah, I don't either. I hate it. Uh, yeah. It's, it's kind of interesting. You, you seem like reluctant to like treat sleep as an interesting topic worth discussing. At the same time, I think you're more of a sleep hacker than most people, even though you don't like instrumentation aspects of it. Uh, you don't want to monitor it or whatever, but you know more about it than I think 90% of uh, people. Yeah. Like people are not aware of all these hackable aspects of sleep. And then of course, you've got all those people who go even more extreme doing polyphasic sleeping and other things. Um, but, but yeah, let's, uh, we've got another 10 minutes, I guess, but what other aspects of sleep are interesting? Like you've got, mm. yeah, couple that are on my mind is one is dreaming. I've always wanted to remember my dreams better than I do and I never can. And the other that interests me a lot as we're getting into summer is uh, mm. uh, patterns of sleep that animals have, like, you know, hibernation and the summer equivalent of hibernation is uh, estuation. Have you heard that term? No. It's hibernation in the summer. Some animals just burrow underground and sleep through the summer. So it's like what? The opposite. Yeah. Crazy. That's insane. Why would they do that? I would like, love to do that. I would love to like, I don't know, one of the two, hibernate or estuate, depending on the local climate. As, as, as estivators all live in the desert or something? That seems like desert behavior. I guess so. Uh, we, we should I'll probably, let's okay. see if I can uh, Google out a typical animal. Because I uh, definitely feel like, I mean, living in Texas, it's sleep, about to start uh, getting really hot. And I definitely... Yeah you start avoiding leaving your house between certain hours um, if you can. Yeah. Okay, estuation is of shorter duration, but bees, snails, earthworms, salamanders, frogs, uh, crocodiles, tortoises, okay, yeah. Oh, okay. So, so it's, it's not as extreme an adaptation as uh, hibernation, but it's the equivalent in uh, summer. And it looks like it's a bunch of amphibians and uh, reptiles like you know lake beds get dry fish get themselves buried in the mud that's an interesting one yeah is this like i mean so i think there's like we haven't really talked much about what sleep is in itself right and like because like isn't it's some it's, it's not exactly a suspension process right like there's some other stuff going on when you're sleeping um, there's a lot of recovery like it's a uh, like brain defragmentation laying down of long-term memory is a big one like if you don't get enough good sleep your long-term memory preservation will suck so there's all those things that happen interesting um, learning if you try to learn something like you know memorize uh, basic like uh, spaced repetition type learning things uh, if you don't get good uh, sleep it won't get like locked into procedural memory so it's it's not it's not like um, a shutdown and uh, pure sort of uh, how do I put it it's not an off mode it's like a uh, active recovery mode yeah. yeah so it's like is I guess I'm trying to like equate it to a coma so a coma isn't like sleeping your brain's not in active recovery mode but it's like in suspended computer mode or something yeah I think a coma, your brain is still active because if the brain is ever completely inactive, you're dead, but it's active in sort of a buggy way, like there's something wrong and you can't like boot into full awakefulness. Mm. So coma is not a normal state, like sleep is sort of a normal state the body is designed for and adapted for, but a coma is obviously not a normal state, right? But, but I think there's like an interesting spectrum there, like setting aside the question of normalcy versus abnormalcy. Uh, You've got sleep as sort of a periodic process and then death as the extreme process. In between, you've got like hibernation, estimation, all those things, comas, uh, including, including really long comas, right? Like people go to sleep for like 10, 15 years and are on ventilators and randomly wake up. So <laughs> at least in soap operas, they do. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. It's like their internal computer like finally figures out how to t hit like the right sequence to start up right um i don't know that it's random usually there's like a reason like did you ever watch that robin william movie robin williams movie about uh, i forget the name of it but it's based on an oliver sacks book it's about all these patients who are catatonic so not quite the same as sleeping or in a coma so catatonic as in like unresponsive and in stasis so like staring off into space and not talking oh i see okay and this was uh uh 
because their brains were lacking a particular chemical. So they were kind of frozen. And that chemical, I think, is L-dopamine. And uh, they discovered that giving these patients injections of L-dopamine uh, basically woke them up. So they were, some of these people had been like in that catatonic state for like decades. They gave them the injections and they woke up. Now the tragedy, which is what the Robin Williams movie is about, he's the doctor who figures this out and does the treatment regimen, is that unfortunately they're not able to continue the treatment because then it sends them into psychotic seizures and things. So they can't like keep them woken up. So they have to stop the L-dopa treatment and they lapse back into the catatonia. So it's an amazing sort of book and movie. Sounds like really intense. Okay. Yeah. I'll have to check so, it out. You're right. It's like this, uh, I don't know if hyper object is the right term, but this huge area of human life that's like almost a world unto itself with all these aspects to it. Yeah. Yeah. And it like super influences like your day to day, you know, like you're saying, like your current ability to mentally function and remember things. And I mean, I don't know about you, but when I don't get enough sleep, I've had like distinct experiences of basically feeling like I'm high and elated and just having yep. like an incredible experience because I am loopy with it because I haven't slept in like however long. Um, I haven't had that in a couple of decades, but yeah, I used to have that when I did used to do all the, you know, uh, bragging kind of like college all-nighters. Yeah, that would lead to, lead to euphoria. I remember that actually, like one of my first such experiences was finishing my undergrad computer science um, term project. And that was like a couple of all-nighters in like 1993 or something and walking back at like 4 a.m. from the computer lab and like in this heightened euphoria state with my buddy who was my programming partner. And that was like a surreal experience that somehow still locked in my brain. I mean, but it's yeah. basically like doing drugs. Like it's, it's yeah. the exact same experience as like when you take, not exact same, but a very approximate situation to like doing some like hallucinogens. So when was the last time you had uh, an all-nighter that was not related to like jet lag or travel or something? Probably recently. I was like, I'll stay up really late watching TV. It's terrible. Um, like, I approve of that heartily. <laughs> oh no. It's so, like, I definitely, I definitely pulled all-nighters um, last year when like I got the switch and it was like early pandemic season and I was at home and like, wasn't feeling well. So I was like playing on my switch all the time. And I would just like, I was playing Stardew Valley, which was like this little um, farming game. And I would just like stay up. I would basically stay up all night playing farming. Oh, is that the device that had the Animal Crossing game on it? Yep, that everybody that's was playing? Okay. Yeah, I didn't get into Animal Crossing. I was having too much fun in Stardew Valley. Um, I so you were staying up all game. night playing this other game? Yeah, I like, yeah, it was terrible. It was so bad. I was like, I was, I did not get much work done that week. You know, I just like, I can't work when I don't sleep. That's kind of amazing that you can still do that. Like, I think I lost the ability to pull all-nighters like sometime in my late 20s. Like nothing seemed to matter enough to like mm. forego a night's sleep. Like I enjoy sleep too much. So I actually would stop whatever I'm doing and go to sleep. But um, yeah, yeah, I mean, I've done all-nighters, but mostly because of like, you know, uh, emergency reasons or like some actual crisis I had to deal with but I don't enjoy it. <laughs> I would not do an all-nighter. I'm really choice. good at just getting caught up in stuff or like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> really good at it. That's it's cute. bad. Um, it's, it's not a good feeling though. Like the next day I'm like super dehydrated and like everything like aches. Like it's just like, I feel gravity feels way different. Like your ability to like process gravity, like for me, it gets like a little mi mixed up. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm actually like, I started trying to get in bed around like 9 30 or 10. And then it's like, okay, Lisa, you can get in bed and then do whatever you want. Once you're in bed, you just have to like get in bed at 10 o'clock at like 9 30, 10. And it's like so much fun. It like, it like kind of feels like giving myself a mini vacation every night. It's like, oh my gosh, I get to like go hop in bed. Like, so between the time you sort of get into bed and actually fall asleep, it's like a little vacation every night. Yeah, basically. <laughs> um, yeah, I can do whatever I want, Van Cat. Um, watch TV. It's a liminal and, space. Oh. It's totally a liminal space between, like, you know, committed time of wakefulness versus committed time of, like, sleep. Yeah, exactly. And so I'm working on, like, getting in bed early. So, like, it's, like, it's that's kind of, like, a self-hack to get myself in bed earlier. Um, because if I go to bed early, I'll wake up earlier. Like, I'll just wake up, like, which is nice. It's nice to get up early, get all more done. Um, so I've been getting to bed earlier so I can wake up earlier, but I think like 
the next thing is once I get in bed being like, hey, wouldn't it be great if like we turn off the light and went to sleep? Like, um, so like trying to like fall asleep earlier, just like yeah, slowly, anyways. Yeah, I can relate to that. Like, um, especially if I have something I want to think about, like uh, open-ended, like, you know, something playful, like a science fiction story idea or something, that's really fun to just lay back and think about and speculatively because you've not yet committed to that as a project you want to do. So there's no like pressure around the thinking. So you can lay back and actually think. And unlike when I was younger and I wouldn't be able to control the runaway thoughts, like if I got too excited about it, it would keep me awake for hours. And sometimes I would get up and, you know, go back to my desk and uh, type up something or something like that. I, that used to happen like 15, 20 years ago. Now it's more like, I can enjoy sort of like just letting my mind wander thinking about the story or something and then fall asleep whenever I want. It won't keep me up, but I can just like enjoy it. Mm, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. so then that's, all, that's common enough for me now, like half an hour of that maybe. Yeah, sometimes I have trouble waking up in the morning because I'm having so much fun dreaming that I won't get up. <laughs> that I'll like stay in the dream. Um, but I'm like- But you can remember your dreams, right? I think we talked about this once before. I think you we can... talked about this. And I'm like, I believe I'm, I think I fit the definition of what a lucid dreamer is. Um, Cause like, I always know when I'm dreaming, like always. Um, I don't have dreams where it's like, oh, this is like, and I think it's real. Like, that just seems like the weirdest thing. Like, I don't understand. Like, apparently this is like a big thing in philosophy. They're like, well, what if this is all a dream? And I'm like, well, it's obviously not a dream because I know when I'm dreaming and this is not dreaming. Therefore it's not a dream. Um, but I realized that like the reason why that's such a like big thing and that's like a valid thing and most people read it and philosophy is that most people when they dream don't realize they're dreaming until like later apparently. Possibly like I usually realize if I actually think about it in the dream if that makes sense like yeah it, it's not an active cognition but if I stop to think okay this doesn't make sense this is a dream like it's it's never far away from like active uh, reach. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, but I think you're right. Many people have such vivid uh, dreams that it's like they can't remember they're not in a dream. Yeah, which is just weird. To me. It's weird to me personally. I don't yeah. have that experience. Um, maybe my dreams aren't that vivid. We were talking earlier about like maybe I am like sort of whatever the aphantasia ish. Yeah, you. Uh, I think we talked about it. And uh, if you haven't yet done it, you should go read the description and. Uh, figure out if you have it because I, I think that might definitely be a contributing factor. I mean, it's not thing as is like if I see something on a computer screen, I can like pull up that thing again and see it. But like, what about like people's faces? I think that's a good test. Like, you know, your grandmother's face. If you close your eyes, can you like completely visualize almost like a color photograph of her? I just saw a colored photograph of her like half an hour ago. So like, I can remember that photograph. Yeah. Yes, but remembering the photograph versus being actually able to re see it again in your mind's eye, no. you can't do that, okay. No, I think but most I can people, remember the photograph. Yeah, that I can too. Like I can sort of remember the yeah. basics of the photograph and kind of vaguely recall its essence, like, you know, the expression or something. I can and, probably draw the photograph though, like. But I can't like see it clearly in my head. Like, you know, I might remember that, uh, you know, um, the person was wearing like green clothes and was oh, smiling. Yeah. Oh no, you're right. I don't know what the person was wearing in the photograph. That's a good point. Yeah, the people who I think most normal people can just close their eyes, bring up the photograph and again and say, all right, yeah, mm -hmm. person was wearing a green shirt. So yeah, yeah you may have a fantasy. Like but um, hmm, yeah, but no. um, th those thought experiments of are we all in a dream? Kind of think they're like not really about sleep or simulation as such they're about something else and it's like kind of annoying that they become thought experiments about sleep yeah anyway right so that's uh, but if they're not heard... about sleep like what are they about nature of consciousness nature of computation things like that like you know you watch the matrix like if somebody actually literally hacked into your brain and shoved like a, a brain interface plug into it presumably they could uh, you know, an advanced alien species, they could create uh, realistic uh, simulations. And even like, I, I, I don't know how good VR today is, but the Oculus I have, it's immersively realistic. And I can imagine that in a couple of generations, that stuff will be indistinguishable from reality. Like if you don't like stress it too much. So I can imagine that it's possible to create like a mental environment, a simulation that's like 
Yeah, impossible. Yeah, 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 yeah. I say yeah just because, well, I have to acknowledge that you're correct because all of a sensation travels through like the brainstem, right? And like yeah. is a is a brainstem thing. I think the thing that'll take them a long time to get correct for that is like the experience of having a body. Yes, so that's going to be a big long problem. The whole uh, recreating the sense of uh, proprioception, as they call it, like all yeah. over body awareness. Yeah. I mean, you'll still have that, but putting that in the virtual environment, that's hard. Like, um, have you ever been to the really tacky movie theaters that try to do like 3D experiences? Like you say you're watching Jurassic Park or something, the seat yeah. moves and sprays water on it. 3D IMAX, man, it's great. Yeah, that, that's what it is, I think. Yeah, 3D IMAX. Okay. It's really crappy. Like, I think I watched uh, Aquaman like that. Oh. And it was like, <laughs> it's, there was like a little spritz of water and it's like, this oh, is annoying. Yeah. The movement was like, all right, it's like just a jerky bus. It's not at all like the what I'm seeing on the screen. So mm -hmm. the very fact that it's like so far from being able to recreate the sense of uh, what's happening to your body is uh, kind of laughable. So that may, uh, there may be some fundamental physics limits to how much you can recreate that. Yeah. 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 Anyway, so we are at 310. So any more final closing thoughts on sleep before we both fall asleep for uh, the summer? Wait, what did we call it? An estuation? Estuation. 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 Going yes. into Scorpio season. And scorpions seem like a good breed to take an estuation yep. for the summer. Um, All right. So that's our Z episode and the wrap of season two. That's right. Yep. yep. So hope everybody listening has a really good time and has fun things in the post-COVID summer. Uh, well, I don't know what I'm planning to do, but probably finishing my Mars rover. What about you? Do you have big summer plans? No. <laughs> All right. All right. Great season. All right. Always a pleasure, man, Cat. Catch you next time. Scorpio season is proud to be sponsored by uh, Smoke and Screws, the premium filter for your glass pipes, water pipes, and one hitters. Check out their next generation screen technology at smokeandscrews.com. Great. Um, and if you liked our show, don't forget to like and subscribe.